Hello, friends of Tangled Hearts. Welcome to our channel, where stories of love and passion unfold. Let's begin our exciting journey into the world of human relationships. It was 9 o'clock in the evening when Bill finally made up his mind and went upstairs to the bedroom. Anna, his magnificent 26-year-old wife, was getting ready to go somewhere with her friends. He wasn't particularly happy when she went out with these women last Friday, but he couldn't and didn't want to accept it as part of a new weekly routine, she saw the expression on his face and sighed. You're not going to sulk about this, are you? He nodded towards the tiny dress laid out on the bed, and the sensual sky-blue lingerie she was wearing. She looked strikingly alluring in them. I haven't seen these before, he said, she looked a bit embarrassed. Well, yes. I bought them just this week. He pondered for a moment, then went to the bathroom, returning with her lingerie from the laundry basket. So, is this normal for a husband? He pointed to a very plain, unremarkable set of bra and panties he was holding. But you happily buy this, he pointed to the tiny sky blue bra and lace thong barely concealing her charms, for some men whom you've never even met before. He gazed at her intently. Unless, he paused meaningfully. Unless this is just another nighttime stroll with the girls on the prowl. Maybe you really have arranged to meet someone there, like, on a date. He tilted his head as she looked at him incredulously. No. She exclaimed. There's no one else. How could you even think that? So, he said, ignoring her question and choosing his words carefully. When you're out with your friends, you never dance with other men, embrace them, kiss them, or allow them to get close to you. How dare you even suggest that? Now she was angry. I dare to suggest it because I know more about your friends than you probably realize, he replied. One single, two are divorced, and then there's you, to complete the set. Do you really expect me to believe that when they're seeking casual encounters, they wouldn't try to bring you down to their level? How dare you judge them? She snapped at him. I'm not judging them, he responded calmly. They're free to make their own choices, as are you. She looked at him suspiciously. So you're telling me not to go? How can you call that a choice? I didn't tell you not to go out. I simply made it clear that I consider it inappropriate behavior for a married woman and that your girlfriends are getting you into situations that will inevitably end badly for our marriage. She got angry. Are you seriously suggesting that my outings with girlfriends could threaten our marriage? She scoffed. Don't be so damn insecure. I always come home to you. Why are you so worried? I'm worried because you're the most beautiful woman I know, and you go to clubs with single girls whom I don't trust. Add to that excited men and alcohol, and it's a surefire way to trouble. He continued, raising his hand to prevent her interruption. Our marriage is already at risk because you think this, he gestured towards her almost nakedness, is something your husband should just accept without questions. Hey, now it's too late. I promised to meet them at 10, and you're trying to make me late, continuing in the same spirit. She returned to her makeup that he decided to make one last attempt. You also promised to respect your husband, he remarked pointedly. It seems you're comfortable enough ignoring that promise. Or are the feelings of your friends more important to you than mine? What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you trust me? She snapped. I'm just going out for drinks with the girls. That's it. Now, for heaven's sake, leave me alone. He sighed deeply. It's just that I want to trust you, but I refuse to sit at home every Friday night, wondering if you'll take another step or end up accidentally flirting with some guy. I would never do that. You, he interrupted her again. Gail boasted about her exploits on social media last week. She's one of your friends, and that's precisely what she did. How much time needs to pass before you start to believe everything's fine, if I never find out? She just stared at him, at a loss for words that he continued, now more resolute. If you want to go dancing, invite me along. 
If you just want to go rub elbows with strangers, then be honest, and we can end this right now. You're just being insulting. She lashed out at him. No. I'm being honest. I don't believe you're just a fan of dirty dancing and kisses, looking for illicit affection or, worse, a quick fling. I'm willing to believe you haven't cheated with anyone. But that's the choice I'm offering you. Leave or stay, it's up to you. But remember, I have a choice too. If you leave, you can party as much as you want. I won't be here when you come back. So here it is. He said it. He had given her every opportunity to understand his feelings, to hear his desire to mend their marriage. Now she had a choice, him or them. Dot. You're joking, damn it. She was as furious as he had never seen her over the past four years they'd been a couple. No, he said quietly. If you want to dress like your slutty friends and go out drinking and dancing with them every Friday night, that's fine. I'm just telling you that the prospect of me sitting at home waiting for you to come back one night is not how I envision my future. For now, he said, heading towards the door, I have things to attend to. I'll be downstairs when you've made your decision. She sat in front of the mirror, pondering. She hadn't had sex, but, not quite. Last week, she had felt a strong temptation and, in consolation, guy, but that was all. And she liked how men looked at her on the dance floor. It made her feel more desirable. Bill always complimented her on how she looked, but he had to, he was her husband. But the guys in the club, they wanted her, they desired her. Bill sat at his laptop, filling out an online form. It was a quarter to ten when she came downstairs. He looked up. Was she staying or leaving? She wore high-heeled shoes, showcasing her long, slender legs disappearing into a short, tight blue dress. He said nothing. Was she planning to accept his offer to invite her to dance, or was she intending to go dancing with her promiscuous friends? She still looked indecisive, then she spoke, I'm leaving. We can talk tomorrow. He slowly shook his head and turned back to his computer, silently ignoring her. She stood there for a moment, unsure if he was bluffing. He didn't even hear the front door close as she left. He finished filling out the form, attached the link to the email, and clicked send. He went upstairs and threw some clothes into a couple of suitcases. On Monday, he would tell his boss that he accepted the job offer in Dubai. He called a taxi and, while waiting, sent a message to his wife's family group, Hello everyone. I'm sorry you have to find out like this, but Anna made it very clear to me that she needs more excitement and variety in her life than I can provide. I sent her the link to our divorce statement via email. It has been an honor for me to be part of your family, but I hope you understand why I have decided from this moment onwards to no longer maintain contact with all of you. He had to do something else, so he approached the printer, took a sheet of paper from the output tray, and wrote something down. He affixed it over their wedding photograph above the fireplace. Then he turned off his phone and went out onto the street to wait for his taxi. Anna had just sat down at a table in the club and was chatting with Gail when her phone rang. If this is Bill begging me to come home. She said irritably that IT wasn't. It was her older sister, Karen. Where the hell are you disappearing to? Karen yelled. Uh, I'm at the club with my friends, she said, defensively. So what? Does Bill know? Karen asked. Uh, yeah. Well, he knows I'm hanging out with friends. So what's the matter? And was he happy about it? Karen seemed annoyed. But, on the other hand, she always had a soft spot for Bill. No, he wasn't pleased. But I told him we'd talk about it tomorrow. Well, good luck with that, you foolish cunt. He dumped you. If you don't believe it, check your email. Gail watched in astonishment as Anna frantically tried to open her email app on her phone. Even in the dim lighting of the nightclub, she could see her friend visibly pale. Anna noticed the message for her family. 
It must have been the reason for Karen's call, then her phone rang again. Thank God, it's Bill. No, it was her father. What did you say to Bill? Her father demanded an answer. This man treated you like a queen, and you wanted more. No, Dad. It's not like that. I just felt trapped. I needed just one night a week, you know, to be myself. You're in a damn nightclub. Your husband just dumped you, and you're going to damn nightclubs? He asked incredulously. Her father was clearly furious. He had never cursed like this in front of his family before, what could she say? She was in the club, it was obvious from the background noise. No, Dad. He must have decided something after I left. Dad? Dad? He hung up, Anna grabbed her purse and phone and hurried to the exit, completely ignoring Gail and not noticing her two other friends as she passed them on the street. She found a taxi and was home within 15 minutes. On the way, she tried to call her husband, but his phone just went to voicemail, the house was quiet and deserted. She kicked off her shoes and rushed upstairs. Most of his clothes, shaving kit, were gone. She went downstairs. His phone, laptop, wallet, all gone as well. Back upstairs, his passport was also missing. He had warned her. No ambiguity. No room for misinterpretation. If she left that night, she would return home to an empty house. She knew he hated lies. In the past, he had been betrayed by a girl, and he placed honesty above all else. He did exactly as he said, Anna descended downstairs in complete bewilderment. An hour ago, she was married. Now they were separated. Less than a year later, she would be divorced. All because she went dancing. Then she saw the photograph above the fireplace. Something was off. When she saw what he had done, she felt like she was going to be sick. It was a picture from someone's social media profile. It showed a young man on one knee proposing to his girlfriend. But there, in the background, was Anna, kissing some guy while he fondled her breasts. In big black letters at the bottom, Bill had written, Liar. Well, what happened next? Bill goes abroad, and Anna was given the freedom she dreamed of. Everything that happened after that, the abortion and Anna's subsequent childlessness six months later, Bill eventually marrying a sweet and charming Australian woman he met while kayaking in Dubai, are separate stories that may or may not be written. But their story, the story of Bill and Anna, ended there. Story 2 As I entered my street, I reduced my speed and drove more cautiously. The city council still hadn't fixed the dangerous pothole in the middle of the road, despite my weekly phone calls and letters. Our street was located at the base of a steep hill, causing cars to enter it at an unacceptably high speed, and I worried that an accident would happen one day. Obviously, this didn't warrant attention, as I never received any response other than, we are working on it. Well, perhaps I will consider voting for the opposition in the next elections. Approaching the house, I noticed a large car parked on the driveway. I wondered if one of Emma's friends had come to visit her. I was well acquainted with her friends, and they occasionally hung out at our place, so it wouldn't have been unusual, but the car didn't resemble anything her friends would drive. Emma and I had been dating for four years, and for the past year, we had been living together. I knew she was expecting a ring soon, and my plans included giving it to her and making a lifelong proposal. Turns out, instead of that, she was planning to gift me my own lifelong memory. I parked in the garage and entered the house, announcing my presence. Darling, I'm back from work. She was sitting in the living room on the couch with a man I hadn't seen before. I had a very bad feeling about this, but I decided to give her a chance to explain before getting angry. I didn't know we had a guest. Who is this, Emma? Welcome home, dear. Mark, this is, this is Donovan. I think. I think we need to talk. 
My suspicions were confirmed, and I tried to remain calm in the situation, knowing that I wouldn't gain anything by being violent. What is there to talk about? You both know how it looks, and I sincerely hope I'm completely wrong about this, and instead, you both have a wonderful explanation. Well, you see, you know that we've been dating for a long time, and I really want to marry you and grow old together, but I would like to explore some things before we settle down forever. I don't want to reach 60 and regret everything I didn't do, so I want to get this out of my system while I'm still young and unmarried. I've been seeing Donovan for a while now, and I don't want to continue doing it behind your back. I thought it would be fair to tell you. I want to make you an offer so that we can all be happy. Don't you think it would be nice to open up our relationship? Open up the relationship? Seriously? What's honest about that, Emma? It's just a mess. I hope you won't take it that way. You understand that by agreeing to this, you'll have the freedom to see other women, but I trust you enough to know that you'll come back to me. I won't pretend that I like it, but for a successful relationship, both partners have to play by the same rules, so I can't deny what I want for myself. Give us a chance, and you'll see how much stronger we'll become as a result. Even if you're not fully convinced now, I'm sure that in a few months, you'll see it as just a minor, beneficial shakeup in our relationship. Do you even listen to yourself? You're not playing by the right rules, are you? You have a romance behind my back, and you have the audacity to pretend it's an open relationship, so you don't feel guilty about it. A minor shakeup? God, you're insane. Have you always been this foolish, and I just didn't notice? Donovan started to speak. Now listen here. No, shut up, for heaven's sake, this concerns only her and me. That's enough for me. Both of you, get out of my house right now. I can't stand your presence. Emma sighed. I really hoped you wouldn't react like this, but I suspected it might be possible. I've packed a bag with a few things, and I'm going to stay with him for the next few days to give you a chance to calm down. I'm sure you'll understand what it's like for B. Get out. Seeing the anger in my eyes, Emma decided that it was in her best interest to comply with my demands. She grabbed her bag and approached to kiss me, but the rage she saw in my eyes made her change her mind. They both left the house and headed to his car. I walked to the door and, trying to remain as calm as possible, said, I hope you know that we're done. I'll let you know when you can come by to pick up the rest of your things. I hope you're smart enough to ask someone else for help, as that scumbag is not allowed in my house. Emma stood closer to me, near the passenger seat door, while Donovan approached from the driver's side, facing the road. She tried to make one last plea. Darling, please don't make any decisions right now. I know you're upset, and I'm sorry to be the cause of it, but I believe that in the long run, this will make us stronger. I'll give you a few days before we talk, and... Her words were interrupted by the loud sounds of an engine running at full throttle. We watched as a red sports car descended the hill at a speed far exceeding the limit. The deafening noise made conversation impossible, so Emma fell silent, waiting for the car to pass. I observed as the car approached and realized it was heading straight for a large pothole too fast to notice and react to. Diving into the pothole, the car lost control and crashed into Donovan's car on the driver's side. The side where Donovan was standing, waiting for Emma's speech to finish. Her horrified gaze told me everything I needed to know. A smile appeared on my lips. Perhaps I will vote for the current mayor after all. As we conclude our journey into the world of human relationships, please remember to subscribe, like, and share our content. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to seeing you in the next story.